dudes are just hopping in. We were talking the other day about how there's TikTokers giving people instructions on how to run a Russian tank if they come across one. And so there's these Ukrainian dudes that are just tank jacking, riding around in tanks. Good for them. It's like friggin' Grand Theft Auto. I mean, I know it's not. It's certainly not a video game, but uh, that's kind of what it's like. These guys hopping in and doing stuff. They've also got Ukrainian uh, people <clears throat> who have captured Russian soldiers. And again, depending on what you read, uh, things are not going well for Ukraine. But um, they had uh, Russian uh, captured soldiers and Ukrainians calling their mothers, telling them to come get their sons. These Russian soldiers who are like, you know, just because they're in the Russian army doesn't mean that they want to be there and doing this stuff. A lot of them said that they were told they were going on training exercises and they had no idea what was going on. I don't know why you'd be doing training exercises in another country, but whatever. That's what they said. They should have blurred their faces, though. Cause the Whose thing, faces? The soldiers' faces. I think some of them they might have. Some of the videos I saw they did. The but these I Ukrainians saw. that are well, like you... on the phone with these captured soldiers' mothers going, hey, come get your son. And they're giving them food and, you know, come get it's your kid. Me. You want him alive, don't you? What's I'm sure, that? I'm sure if it's a news source, they're going to blur the faces. But if someone's just posting it on social media, they don't have the... They're not blurring faces on there. But they can, though. They, but they might not even think to do that. But they're putting these soldiers at risk more so than they already were because they can never go back home. They are a traitor in their home country now. And, I mean, now that they know their faces, they know well, their... A lot of them don't have TikTok at, or, or any of the social media it, over but there. But it doesn't matter. They have their uniform. There are, ten, their there, are ten, there are tens of thousands of people in Russia protesting this under pain of imprisonment. So it's not like everybody... It's not like Russian soldiers necessarily want to be there but imprisonment is so, one thing now you're going to be like beheaded and be a disgrace like if they I, can't I, get I, you they'll get your family well okay so I'm i don't saying, know if you just a little courtesy i don't know <laughs> you know what they say courtesy in wartime um i don't know if ukrainians who are capturing russian soldiers have their uh, immediate uh, safety while their cities are being shelled and bombed and they're hiding NICU units in bomb shelters. I don't know if their first consideration is making sure that the caption, uh, captured Russian soldiers mm -hmm. can't be identified. Just a Russian soldier. Just yeah, If you need a place to sleep, like I got an extra bed. I don't know. I think that would be a fun way to start a romantic relationship. Like, a fun way. A prisoner of war. You know what? You've got it. You've got to hand it to Pound Cake because he will always see the pants as half full. He goes, "This would be a great half way off. to uh, start a relationship." Well, see, your father in was his in, mind. <laughs> your father was sent in by Putin to to fight a ridiculous war that no, that they're not going to win. They yeah. never, they didn't have a chance of winning. And so your father, he he was protesting that, and he went AWOL. And I found him laying behind a shack. And I said, hey. Laying wanna, behind a shack. Hey, you come, there he was. You want to come hang out at my house? Sure. And that's how you were made. I've got something I want to be putting into you. IKEA is the latest company to, quote unquote, pause their operations in Russia and Belarus. So that means a lot of troops have been freed up from their bookcase assembling stations to join the war effort. I don't know what that means. I guess these companies go, well, we have to do that. Lego has announced that they will stop halting shipments. But they will stop shipments of bricks to Russia. So even Lego okay. has to get in on this and go, eh, if you think the people in Russia are going to be able to build Jerry Seinfeld's apartment, hmm. think again. They should spread them out on Ukrainian roads and then take Russian soldiers' boots away from them. <laughs> If you want to so go home, you got to walk across <laughs> all these Legos. You got to run barefoot on roads paved with random Lego, right? All directions. Yeah, ow, uniform, ow, 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 Different sizes. Oh, borscht. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's a violation of the Geneva Convention to do that, but uh, I'm sure somebody smarter than I on that subject would know. There's also a wax museum in Paris that is removing the Vladimir Putin wax statue. And they're saying that they may make one of Vladimir Zelensky to replace Putin. These wax statues, boy, if they make one of you, whether it's Madame Tussaud or whether it's any historical museum anywhere around the world. This is in the Grevin Museum in Paris, uh, a waxwork museum where they 
there's always, you're kind of in uncanny valley territory. Some people, boy, they nail it. And other people, you look at them and you go, I get what they were trying to do, mm-hmm. but they said we've never, it's historical, obviously, but they said we've never represented dictators like Hitler uh, and Stalin in our museum, and we don't want to represent Putin today. So there you go. That's what I find interesting in this whole thing is that it's not like Putin is a different guy now than he's ever been. Right. So all well. these people, they're like, what? Like, this guy couldn't have been more telegraphing what... You know how people always talk about how Trump says the quiet part out loud? It's the quiet part to us. It's not the quiet part to them. For, for 50 years, this guy's been telling you who he is. Same thing with Putin. But but saying things and doing things are different. You can talk all the game you want, so that's what makes him a different guy now. Sure, he talked about this kind of stuff, but actually doing it puts you into a different stratosphere. But he does it every few years. He took Crimea, and he took... Uh, not to this know, extent. Not to this extent, that's true. But, but what I'm still. saying is it's not wholly unprecedented that when this guy goes... I want to do this. I mean, he's been very open about the fact that he really misses the Soviet Union, and he believes that these countries belong to Russia. And so it's not like one day they go, oh, my God, did you hear what Vlad did? We were just playing badminton two weeks ago, and now look at this guy. It's not like he was if also I had known. like supporting a free press or fair elections or anything like that. He's been a dictator, even though he calls himself a president. He's been a dictator. Since he took power. Journalists keep falling out of windows yeah. in Russia. I'm not saying he's I've a never guy. heard of so much defenestration in one country before. <laughs> I'm saying that... What, is glass really expensive over there? They just can't sit... You know, you know what I mean? It's just these people. Another journalist who was doing an expose on the Kremlin fell out of a window. Yeah, well, you generally will fall From when you're pushed. the window to the fall. <laughs> Uh, That's why people love Zelensky, because he's the actual hero that Putin has always pretended to be. With his bare chest, horseback riding, mm-hmm. and, you know, things like that. They love this. It's like all those mega dopes who put Trump's head on Rambo's body. You see those flags, <laughs> oh, you know? All the time. Anybody see Mary the- walked into the house of, or the yard of someone that has those, right? Not Rambo. Not the Rambo one. Oh, is that the one where you pulled over and you were in the yard? Yeah, he had handwritten signs like, we love you, Trump. Thank you for... I think <laughs> but did he have the Trump head on the Rambo body? No, he didn't have oh, anything okay, like that. Okay, he just had, like, Confederate flags, don't tread on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the greatest hits. Yes. He yes. might have had those on... Those, he's like, those are inside yeah, flags. Yeah, those are inside <laughs> flags, probably. Or in his car or something, from the back of his truck flapping yeah. around. I don't know. Um, I don't have internet access out here, so that's my pornographer. <laughs> Anybody see the Terminator with Biden's head? No, because we're living in reality. Not some fantasy world. That's why. So they're uh, pulling the Putin statue out of this uh, French museum. I like all the hackers. You know, I was pumping gas this morning, and of course, the lovely Maria Menounos. Uh, If you don't get enough of her at the movies or at the gas pump, I don't know what to tell you. She is ubiquitous. Uh, but hackers have been uh, messing with Putin from day one of this whole thing. Like, you know, the anonymous group said that they were breaching the space agency and they were taking down all these websites. And um, another group of hackers were kind of taking a bit more of a playful approach to it. And they hacked um, EV charging stations all throughout Russia so that the display would say, Putin is a dickhead. <laughs> I don't know what that is in Russian. I don't know if there's a direct translation. I don't know. Something's <laughs> lost there. But, um, you know, speaking of computers, Mary's favorite show, mm-hmm. one of them, it's a show called I Think You Should Leave. Oh, my God. And it's on I, Netflix. I actually will leave on that note. Thank you. <laughs> when I was, uh, I was out last Friday because I was taking my daughter to her music school auditions. And we, so we were talking on the way up, and she goes, uh, have you ever heard of a show called I Think You Should Leave? Mm-hmm. And I go, yes, let's talk about this show. She liked it. She thinks it's real uneven, but yeah. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I still think that it's uneven, but the ones that are funny are so funny. Very funny. There's definitely some that I'm just like, mm, I can skip this one. People I've talked to about the show... Um, Bones Are Their Money is kind of the universal crowd pleaser. That's kind of your baseline. Mm -hmm. Mary likes that one. I like that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, uh, Tim Robinson has had a show picked up by HBO Max. He and another buddy are doing a show called Computer School. Have you heard about... Uh... Yeah. Okay. I love Sam Robertson. Is it, is it, what's his name? Sam Richardson. Richardson. From Detroiters. Yeah. Uh, this is Tim Robinson. They've given the uh, green light to Computer School, which is going to be a show about um, a recent high school grad and his uncle who go to the same computer class in suburban Michigan. <laughs> That's the pitch. <laughs> they go, hey, we really like what you're doing. What have you got for us? He goes, um, my nephew and I go to computer school? Great. Let's shoot this puppy. It was originally sold to Hulu, uh, and then it started a bidding war. Can you imagine that? They go, hey, there's a lot of people like what you do. I still consider him to be kind of a niche comedy thing, right? Sure. Like, you either love what he does or you hate what he does. It's a lot of screaming. Depends on where you fall the on the... The screams is so good, though. On the, and again, I'm mm-hmm. no proponent of volume equals comedy. Mm-hmm. I usually, like, avoid that like a vampire in yes. the sun. But uh, some of it's okay. I guess. We're going to have to find out who crashed this hot dog car into this store, and he's dressed as a hot dog. <laughs> sure. That's funny. That's a very funny How are we going to find out who one. did this? He's standing in the crowd. But you're dressed, dressed like a hot dog. So is that guy. And it's a guy in a tan <laughs> suit with a red shirt and a yellow tie. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So Computer School over there at HBO Max, which has given Peacemaker another season, too. Nice. For people who enjoy that. I did enjoy that show. I haven't finished it yet. It's a fun one. I mean, it's uh, over the top silliness, but it was a good time. Yeah. John Cena is also going to be doing a Coyote versus Acme movie, kind of a live action uh, CJ. Finally, Warner Brothers is going to break into the lucrative athlete joins animated characters market. Boy, I can't wait. Never been done before. Never done before. Well, not with John Cena. So he's going to do it. That'll be a lot of fun. Good for them. I had my table read for that uh, TV show last night. How did that go? It was so cool. I've never been in that kind of a situation or like a writer's room or anything like that. And no joke, up until last night, I was always like, I just want to do stand up. I just want to be a comic. And like being in the room with creative people and everyone like throwing ideas off of each other and making edits. And, and we went through the script twice and read it out loud. And like being a part of that was super inspiring and really, really cool to the point where I was like, oh man, I could do this. Like I could be a writer. I could be. It was, I don't know, it was just like I've never experienced anything like that before, and it was um, it was kind of cool to see how the sausage is made, like you always say, mm-hmm. you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff. It was, it was an awesome experience. It was great. So what happens now? I don't know. I'm not, I've never done this before. I think, I think he makes edits and then eventually takes it and pitches it to something, like you're talking about all these places getting picked up on Hulu or whatever. Well, usually a table read happens when it's already, like, going into production. In production. production. Well, I don't, I have no idea. How do you know so little about this? You're very far along in the process of a show. I Again, I know nothing about this. My friend wrote and is directing and producing it, and he's like, hey, I think you'd be good for this part. Come read it. And that was, that was in 2020, and I was like, okay. And I read for it, and he's like, hey, you got the part. I was like, okay, cool. And then we haven't done anything with it for two years. Right. So he's like, okay, the table reads last night. I was like, all right. He's like, all right. So I don't, I mean, I'm not but the there one was no, there was it. no conversation from him about what the, everything, what the process is now? And... I guess we'll shoot it, right? <laughs> is that what happens next? That's traditionally how shows yeah, make it yeah. to where people can watch it. Yes, yeah. they have to film it. Yeah. Do you have to film it? No, I mean, you don't have to, but if you want people to see it, you will. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just exciting. Any chance it's going to be an old-timey radio play? It might. Okay. They do. They We're going to be Foley and farts this weekend, so this is going to be good practice. They loved I the fact that I... got good ideas for my fart Foley. Like what? Are you not going to give you my secrets? Mayonnaise? No. Oh. Cargill no. salt ah. and ketchup. <laughs> Makes a fine abrasive. You know, yeah. the acid from the tomato and the salt for the abrasion. Mm-hmm. Clean your metal. Listen. Um, How's that going to make a fart? Hmm? I'm not telling you my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> it's abrasive fart. <laughs> <laughs> that is one abrasive fart. Mm-hmm. So all I'm saying is you guys might see TV star Mary Santana. I think that's fantastic. I'm just curious. How I know so little? Yes. Because uh, I don't think anything, I don't know how TV works, but these things seem to be a week or two out. We get notification on it. Hey, we're doing the table read in two weeks. Has a pilot been purchased? I don't think so. Then why was there a table read? I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know if I... Was he recording it to pitch it to someone? Yes. There was a camera recording everything. We had microphones on the table. We had all that kind of stuff going on. 
That is the thing now, too, is that because everything is so fragmented and because it's so hard to get money for any level of production, the smart people, and that sounds like maybe this is what this guy's doing, is you have the whole thing packaged before you pitch it. That's what I feel Instead like Instead of going in doing. and going, I've got an idea for whatever, right. you put the whole thing together and then go, hey, these are the people. Yeah. Here's a piece of it. I want you to put up the money for it. That's what I think he's doing. Because okay. he, there were cameras and everything and microphones at the read. And then they did talk about shooting in a few weeks. But it was like nothing was set in stone. It wasn't like, hey, on the 23rd at noon, this is what we're going to do. It yeah. wasn't anything like that. Um, but it was, I think, I have a feeling he's going to shoot, we're going to shoot one or two episodes and then try to sell it based yeah, off of okay. that. That makes sense. Because wouldn't that make more sense not being on a coast? I mean, you can't just walk into a studio from Cleveland. Well, but also, unless you have a ton of juice... You can't just go in and pitch something anymore. Right. Like I said, you got to have the whole thing. You go, here's the first two episodes. Yeah. Right? I think if that's, I think what, he's gonna that's do. what the plan is. And you're going to be a therapist. No, there was a rewrite that I didn't know about until you I got there. Completely redid the character? Yes. Oh, so the therapist you're still perfect is... for it? <laughs> now yes. I'm a hooker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the therapist is um, a different. going to be played by a different character. Now I'm going to be just another um, member of the group but kind of like the flirty love interest of the main character. You got demoted from therapist to therapy? I got, well, Thera- I got promoted. A bigger, promoted. Role. Thera- a bigger role on the show. A bigger a love role, interest. yes. Or she. Oh, you're going to be is. the love interest yes. of the main character? Yes. Is that a man or a woman? I'm a woman. He's a man. What? <laughs> I mean, it immediately makes it less interesting to me. You know? Well, <laughs> there was a line where I, because the guy, I mean, I don't get it all the way or whatever, but I don't know how much can be out there. There's a line where my character says, I'll crash my car into the dude who banged my wife. And I like was reading it and I was like, I know you guys did rewrites, but am I a lesbian now? And they were like, no, 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 you're making fun of another guy in there. So it was like, it was very confusing at first. But no, Does this thing have straight. a name? It's called Stuck. S-T-U-C-K, yes. Okay. Raj Suresh is the guy who is, um, he's a comedian and writer. He's the one who's putting it all on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so now I am, uh, no, it, so the plot was going to be that the guy who's in the group therapy had this love interest with the therapist, but that didn't seem normal. So they rewrote it as being a, just another member of the group. Aren't you glad you got that Invisalign? Very glad. Do you know that that was one of the reasons I wanted it was so that I could be more marketable to like Netflix or who or Amazon anybody who puts on comedy specials or Invisalign commercials or Invisalign any anything anything where you have to be on TV like I was thinking comedy specials you know but anything where it's like hey look I can I don't look like a shark you know like you, you can put me I on, don't look like a shark <laughs> you can put me in front of a camera and it won't scare people away mm-hmm. you know so all right well yeah keep us in the loop I will but we we're talking about TV shows. If they rewrite it again, I might be out. Or you might have an even bigger part. Yeah. You might, they might make you a lesbian. I might. And then you're the main character, you're the love interest of the woman. I was like, I'm a lesbian of myself. (laughs) (laughs) I'm my own love interest. Uh, Hey, man, they got to pitch weirder and weirder (laughs) ideas just to poke through. The guy. You got to get people's attention. There was a guy there last night. His name's Dan O'Shannon. He, yeah, my wife's worked with him. Okay. Yeah. Sweetest dude ever. He's modern Family. And, modern yeah. Family, Frasier, Cheers. He's got Emmys. He's got yep. all this stuff. Very funny. So being in the room with him, and he's someone who's been doing this for 30 years, you know, he's going through and just like mm-hmm. watching someone who is in their element thrive. I felt like he was putting on a clinic, just sitting and absorbing everything he was saying and like trying to learn. He's from Shaker or something, I think, he's isn't from he? The Cle- he's from yeah. the East Side. Excuse me. He's from the East Side, but he lives in, uh, I think, Lakewood or something now. But um, yeah, so just watching someone like him, because we don't have a lot, I feel like we don't have a lot of experience with that kind of stuff here in Cleveland, or maybe I'm just naive to it. No, this is not an entertainment yeah. hub. Right. Yeah. So it was really cool to be a part of that and to see how TV shows get made. And like, and to he be... wasn't living here when he was working for those shows either. So. Right. He's yeah. probably in LA would be my guess. Oh, I would, that would be my <laughs> guess too. Yeah. Very cool though. You have a fish where the fish are. Um, let me take a break. I will have those boat show tickets for you. Cleveland Boat Show starts up the 17th and runs through the 20th back out of the IX Center. So if you want to get your head in the nautical space, get you a couple of tickets there. 35192 if you want to text, and we'll be back. The Dale and Cox Show. Every-